Well, March Madness is officially over, and South Carolina yet again is crowned NCAA champions. And this South Carolina team right here, dominant from start to finish, going 38-0 on the season. Now, looking at the Final Four, my three biggest takeaways were the following. First off, people, specifically men, will watch women's sports and tune in by the millions. Second major point, Caitlin Clark, by far, the most influential player in women's sports. And last but not least, something you already knew. The people who hate seeing women succeed the most are indeed other women. You know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate, because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And, uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. Let's just cut to the chase right here. The stuff Caitlin Clark's dealt with the past couple of weeks, I mean, the barrage of hate just jabs out of left field, pretty unprecedented. And the last 24 hours alone, you can have full minute-long compilations of Brianna Stewart, Sue Bird, Tarasi, Jay Williams, all of them taking a dump on Clark and her overall influence for the women's game. And I do find it quite comical for years we've been told WNBA players uplift each other and support each other in their success. Well, it took one superstar, one generational player, to just debunk that and have it thrown out the window. Now, putting those idiots to the side, Caitlin Clark, once again, the most influential player in all women's sports. I mean, look at Iowa vs. LSU. Broke records. Iowa vs. UConn. Broke records. And Iowa vs. South Carolina, again, broke records. Now, of course, those other teams have great players, great in their own rights. But what's the common denominator? Caitlin Clark. And I give props to Dawn Staley because she's been doing this for what, 20, 30 years, played college, WNBA, and is now coaching. She knows Caitlin Clark to the overall game. It's bigger than her. So I give Dawn Staley major props. One of the few people in the media, the few coaches, who understands Caitlin Clark, she's bigger than the game and bigger than herself. Now, one person who doesn't get this is some lady named Lynette Woodard. And you might ask, who is that? Well, good question. Back in the 1980s, Lynette Woodard played at Kansas, was a great player, racking up close to 4,000 points. And for close to 40 years, her overall record, being a great score in college, wasn't recognized by the NCAA. Uh, I am the hidden figure, but no longer now. Uh, my record was hidden. Uh, from everyone for 43 years, 43 years. Uh, I don't think, uh, I'll just go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. Uh, I don't think my record has been broken uh, because you can't duplicate what you're not duplicating. And, uh, so unless you come with a men's basketball and a two point shot, hey. Now, just so we're clear, Caitlin Clark still at the end of the day, scored more points than Lynette Wooder. I don't care about the ball size, the league, or the three point line. End of the day, Caitlin Clark scored more points. End of story. And to have these comments the day before the championship game versus South Carolina, I mean, just hating to the nth degree. As earlier this year, this same lady was brought to Iowa by their coach, acknowledged by Caitlin Clark when she broke the record. I mean, this lady who played 40 years ago, nobody would ever heard of, was brought in by Iowa and celebrated. This right here from Lynette Woodard, a generational backstab, yet again proves women and women's sports will sabotage their own game if it gives them a little bit of spotlight and credit. And let's be clear, Caitlin Clark in the second half of South Carolina did not play good. And on the game, went 10 of 28. You want to criticize her game for performance? Go ahead and do so, knock yourself out. But the strays she's catching from former players, current players, I mean, it goes beyond the game and her play on the court. And for the WNBA, what you have right now is a billion dollar lottery ticket in Caitlin Clark. And you can do one of two things, either cash that ticket in or burn it out of personal pride. And like we saw early in the video, Diana Taurasi, one of Clark's biggest critics, think her rookie season will be a big time wake up call playing against pros and not 18 year olds. And of course, for a rookie, there's always a learning curve, doesn't matter how great you are. But one thing Tarasi's overlooking is her teammates in Indiana 
much improved from your teammates at Iowa. I mean, this championship game, Iowa's tallest player was six foot two. And the WNBA, not gonna be the case, not even close to it. And unlike at Iowa, I don't see Clark and the pros carrying the offense 24 7, handling the ball every time down the court like a female Luka Doncic. I don't see that. Comparing Iowa's college players versus the Indiana Fever, much more talent, size, overall ability, and skill. And looking at Clark's overall impact in college and eventually in the pros, in college, playing for Iowa, playing for South Carolina, LSU, established teams. I mean, getting people to tune in for that, much, much easier than someone sitting down, watching a Minnesota Lynx game or an LA Sparks game. I mean, be real, those teams don't have a nationwide fan base, or even a fan base in their state. Teams like UConn USC on their own are pulling 7 million viewers in the Final Four. It is kind of unfortunate, but women's pro basketball isn't as relevant as the college game. And for Clark and the pros, no doubt she'll pull ratings, get viewers, and people tuning in to watch her. But for a league-wide phenomenon, don't think they're there yet for the average fan. And one more point I do want to make, when it comes to the all-time great players facing pushback, criticism, before they enter the league, guys like Jordan, Bird, LeBron, all face this in their careers. So that right there is some great context for Clark, LeBron, Jordan, guys of that caliber. All the great ones face criticism coming into the league and doubt from players and peers. And once again, looking back at the old guard, the old women's players, I mean, either get on board or get off. Be like Dawn Staley or Diana Taurasi. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.